I bet you have a great idea that you can probably turn into reality, and you can, with Squarespace. They make it easier than ever to launch your passion project. Do you want to showcase work? Do you want to sell products of any kind? They got you covered with beautiful templates and the ability to customize just about anything. You can easily make a beautiful website all by yourself. But if you do get stuck, happens to the best of us. Squarespace's 24-7 award-winning customer support is there to help. So head to squarespace.com grace for a free trial. And when you are ready to launch... You go at your own pace. Use the offer code GRACE to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Not, not too deep. Hello, welcome to another episode of Not Too Deep. I am your host, Grace and how big the first. Very great, lovely, high energy, super fun episode uh, lies ahead for you guys. We have Young Easy and Natalie O'Dell. They're so sweet, so fun, so funny. If you don't know them, you're gonna know them by the end of this. This. We learn all about the how they met via, you wouldn't believe it, Instagram, how they became best friends, and how they've recently fallen in love. Love, love. Not like fake prank, clickbait video love, like real human to human love. And uh, it's very sweet. And uh, they're just so lovely. We talk about uh, all the tips that you need to create a social media career and w- some of the pranks that they've pulled on each other that have gone too far. One involved an entire um, snake, just a big old giant cobra snake in a bedroom, not in a place where snakes should be ever. Uh, but yet they're still in love. Can you believe it? Enjoy this episode of Not Too Deep with Natalie O'Dell and Young Easy. <laughs> First of all, I want to know, how are you ladies doing in quarantine right now? Because for, you know, creators, we've all had to adapt. But looking at everything, looking at your social media, um, you're very, very busy. Both of you are, you're doing and producing so much stuff that I'm tired on your behalf, just keeping up with all of it. Like, what have you, how have you been? What have you been up to? So it's been pretty much working nonstop. You know, because our jobs are social media, you yeah. know, right. which is a great benefit for us during this quarantine because it's like everybody's on their phone. Everybody's mm-hmm. watching. But then again, everybody's like, yo, as soon as we drop something, where's the next video? We want yeah. <laughs> Oh, my God. That <laughs> the hunger level has it. increased. Yes, <laughs> we just dropped it five minutes ago. Exactly. I, is, go ahead. No, I mean, it's um, the amount of content that you guys are producing is incredible, but I can see that there's so much going on with you guys that everyone wants more and more and more. And I feel like unless you're live streaming 24 hours a day, it's not enough for people. Right. At all. At all, people. We, like like I said, we will drop a video and yeah. literally a few hours later, when's the next video coming out? I'm like, uh, what do you want from us? Where are you? Yeah. <laughs> I know. <laughs> You're not machines. And there's now, a lot of emotions in this. Like, Oh, okay. I'm going to get into all of it. But first, let me go back to the beginning. I'd like to hear... Uh, both of your perspectives on your origin story, the first time you guys met each other, what was that story? Okay, so my version of how we met, <laughs> Natalie, you know, she wrote me on Instagram. And, okay. you know, I had already seen her before. She didn't have as, as many as many followers, but I had mm-hmm. seen her because she was collaborating with a lot of big influencers, you know, right. but I never reached out to her or nothing. I just seen her around on social media, on the score page and stuff like that. And I was like, oh, okay, cool. But at the time, I had never collaborated with anybody, you know, and mm-hmm. I was confused. I didn't know how that process worked. I had all these followers or whatever, but I'm like, how come they're not hitting me up? Like, no, <laughs> like, I didn't know how it worked. I didn't know. Like, I'm like, how is she getting these connections? Like, what right. do you do? You know, right, I, right, right. I built it on my own. So it was just like me. And I'm like, I don't know. And I was scared of rejection. I remember I reached out to somebody like, no, I'm good. And I'm just like, okay. So I don't know how she's doing it. But so when she reached out to me, she messaged me and she said, you know, hey, you want to collab? And I see my message and I I responded instantly like, yeah, like, you know, (laughs) and um, she didn't respond for a while. And I was just like, okay. (laughs) And then you have that moment that you're like, was I too eager? Oh, my God. I was like, dang, you know, when you send a text and somebody said text you right back, it's like, okay, you know, so I was just like, okay. It was like, a, I think a couple hours later, and then she, you know, she finally responded with this crazy cool idea. And I was like, yo, that, 
it's cool. But she was all the way in Miami. I was in California. And it was like, how are we going to do this? So she came up with this cool way to do it virtually cool. and make it look still good. And it was like, wow. And then she ended up coming out here. And from my perspective, it was like, yo, like, she keeps inviting me to everything around all these huge influencers. And mind you, the influencers were bigger than me, bigger than her. I'm like, how does she know all these people? And why does she keep inviting me? She's so freaking cool. You know? yeah. like, and ever since then, we just became inseparable. It was just like, we formed this cool friendship and it was like, just amazing, amazing. And things, you know, progressed. And I don't know if, like, you, I don't know if you've seen the last videos. Uh-huh. But I, you know, express my love to her. I didn't. I didn't think it was gonna go. All right, wait. First of all, wait. Okay, slow okay, down. Okay, slow okay. down. Slow down. Okay. So now how? Now let's. How? Wh- what's the time frame on this? How long ago was it that you first met each other? So we first met literally in 2016. <laughs> yeah. Okay. In 2016, we first met, and basically, from my perspective, I'll give you kind of like a shorter version, so she, sure. she already told most of it. <laughs> basically, um, I was collaborating with a lot of people because I basically came to LA to act, and mm-hmm. I didn't live here yet. I was just coming, and I happened to meet. Um, some really big influencers at the time. I mean, they're still really big. It was like King Bass and Daystorm and Mm -hmm. all of them. I ran into them. They ended up um, filming with me a lot. So I started growing uh, like really Mm -hmm. fast and I started becoming friends with like everybody, you know? And I I was like, you know what? When I go home, I'm still going to reach out to influencers all the time and I'm going to be creative on how I can collaborate with them. Mm -hmm. So I saw her and I was like, she's funny. I was like, her content's a little bit different than mine, but I think we could do something together. So that's when I reached out to her. I was like, hey, do you want to collab? I would literally do this every day to tons of people. Like, yeah, you're hustling. (laughs) (laughs) but i was just you know like she said i was collaborating with everybody right so when i basically wrote her i told her i had a good idea i didn't expect that she was going to respond that quick because she has so many followers and she responded like immediately and the reason why it took me so long to like even respond back with the ideas because i had to come up with one i was like oh my god she responded that quick (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> they were like, uh, yes, creative idea. I had one. Um, give me one second. Here it is. Uh. <laughs> exactly. So then basically, you know, we shot the idea. But even before we shot the idea, we had a FaceTime call mm-hmm. and we talked for hours, hours and oh, immediately sweet. clicked. Yeah, immediately we just clicked. Yeah. And I was just like, oh, she's so cool. You know, she had a girlfriend at the time and stuff. And she was like, her, her girlfriend, girlfriend was jealous. <laughs> I was just like, it's because she was Uh-oh. a pretty girl. That's it how you know when the girlfriend's jealous. That's how you know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. She said that she used to get jealous of her. Like, every girl. Every girl. Yeah. Girl. Oh, because okay. Completely just like. Innocent. Innocent. Mm-hmm. Like, you know. Totally. I had never even looked at a girl, like, at all, like, anything. You know what I mean? So I didn't even, it was nothing. But then, you know, basically built to uh, me moving out here, and we became, like, best friends, like, instantly. Mm. Yeah. So, yes. Yeah, you guys, you have a chemistry that you really can't fake, you know? it's And I'm sure people comment this all the time, that, like, it feels very real. It feels like you guys have known each other your entire lives, and that's just really fun (laughs) to watch. Mm -hmm. Um. So I want to hear a little bit about how each of you got into doing stuff online, doing the social media. Like, what is your, what are your backgrounds? So um, for me, you know, my background is acting. So Mm -hmm. like I said, when I came to LA, I was actually coming to network for acting at Mm -hmm. first. And this was back in 2015. And then I met people in social media and I felt like, okay, this is still acting. Like it might not be me going on casting calls, but this is cool. And then I end up quickly realizing that people are making a real living Mm -hmm. off of this. And it's actually giving people opportunities to get their foot in the door for other things like acting. Mm -hmm. So that's how I got into it. And I just stuck with it. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Well, I got into it literally like ever since I was a kid, I loved like recording. Like my grandma got me a camcorder. So I liked to actually just Oh, your grandma stuff. got you a camcorder? Yeah. That's a great grandma gift. Right? Like that's very cool. Awesome. I was I begged her for years and years and years. She finally got me one. A VH it had like VHS tapes you could put in recording. Wow. It's really big. Yeah. And I was just like, I love telling people, okay, this is how you act. 
No, like, you know, a director. I didn't even <laughs> yeah. think I was directing, but it was just like, I love telling people what to do and, mm-hmm. and make it come to life, you know? Mm-hmm. So once I did that and it was just like, I found a love for it. I like to be more behind the camera than in front of it. But once right. social media, like, had, you know, it was Instagram when they came out with videos and it was fine and stuff like that. I made a cool, funny video. I've always been funny and a class clown and stuff. So I made a funny video and it went viral or whatever. And I was just mm-hmm. like, yo, like I always wanted to do acting and stuff like that, but I guess I could do this, you know, people, yeah. people love this. So I just stuck with it and just did like different versions of myself and funny videos. And i kind of like, you know, gained a huge following and loved it ever since. And I loved entertaining people and making people smile. So it just That's stuck. Awesome. That's very Thank cool. You. And it's one of those things that it's, you know, hard to put into words exactly how, because it, it's very difficult to have something go viral and then to maintain and grow exactly. from there. So what was your experience with that? Because it's kind of like an oh shit moment there's lots of eyes on me. How do I keep this going right now? Right. And I think that's what a lot of people, like, like you were saying, like that, that viralness feeling, you mm-hmm. have to learn how to capitalize on them. This is what we teach everybody in our book. Yeah. That capitalizing off of that viral moment is so important because I noticed, okay, so the, the video was pretty much like, you know, I'm part of the LGBTQ community and mm-hmm. it was like, um, you know, how how lesbians act, and I was dressed up all tomboy, but when the club says Lady Free before 10, I dress like a girl. So it was like a switch, Perfect. yeah, you know? And then I was like, okay, people love me embracing, you know, my community, and on top of it, still seeing me, like, dress girly, because I never dress girly. Mm-hmm. So I was like, how do I incorporate that and then still wanting more? So I just stuck with the, like, talking about the LGBT community, but making it so funny, mm-hmm. you know? Hey. And then, yeah, it was just so, like riding that wave. Yeah. Sorry. No, no, I just wanted to kind of add on to it. So basically to break it down, that was how she did it. But to break it down for just anyone, mm-hmm. it's mm-hmm. about identifying like she did what works for you. Exactly. You know, yeah. If you end up going viral before you even really realize what your brand is mm-hmm. and the message you're trying to put out there, you have to identify why did that go viral? What did people like about it? look at the comments all of that and that's Mm -hmm. the type of stuff you stick to I think that people have a problem with trying too much or doing too much and a lot of times that's why they'll see like some their success fluctuate or what sometimes it's doing good sometimes it's not doing good that's because you're not kind of like really listening to what the audience wants to see right (laughs) right and you guys do you do a lot of pranks uh, which kudos, I cannot do pranks. I am such a pussy. Like I, uh, it makes me <laughs> cringe so hard. I can't do it, but I have such admiration for people that are actually able to do it and to like be in public in the most ridiculous sense that you guys have put yeah. yourself in. Um, is there a favorite that has stood out to you or one that's been the most memorable you already for know. For sure. So I did, oh, a, I did a prank on Uh-oh. Easy. This is and, first uh-huh. off, I want to say this is... Okay, sorry. Go ahead. Tell me. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I put a um a 250-pound snake in her bed while she was asleep. No, thank you. No, thank this- you. How did you... Okay, the logistics of this for one oh second. Oh, my God. So Tell you me have it was the second largest one in California. Yeah, it was the second largest snake no, in California. No, I literally, all the hair on my arm is standing up right now. I hate snakes, but okay. So you have this, first of all, how do you have this idea? Where does right. this come from? How? <laughs> Honestly, that's kind of how I got the name Frank Queen. <laughs> But I just honestly started, um, I just would think like, all right, it's hard when we prank each other so much to stay innovative and kind of do stuff that they're not going to expect. And I was like, she's not going to expect to wake up with this snake. And then even when she does wake up with it, she's going to know I did it, but her reactions are going to be priceless because she's really going to be scared. So basically, I just try to think, what are her biggest fears? And I know she's afraid of, she's literally afraid of little tiny, like daddy long legs. So I I knew she'd be afraid of the snake, and I found... Mind you, she's a country girl. In the video, she's um, holding the snake. Just like, what? <laughs> Huge. <laughs> well, I'm like, how do you go from, I want to get a snake and put it in her bed to getting the actual snake? 
and so putting it in a bag. So I just did a lot of research. Honestly, I just started looking on even Instagram and being like, okay, what zookeepers? Like I was just looking for somebody to collaborate with. And I found right. this guy who has um, all kinds of pythons and stuff like that. I was like, you know what? Let me DM him. So I wrote him and he mm. was like, I'm down. So we did it. Oh my God. Well, and now what happened, like break it down. Of yeah. What was going through your head? Because I'm telling you everything that was going on in my head. You're going to hear me. I'm going to tell you. Like, so up? basically when they brought the snake, I was like, okay, you guys have to come early in the morning because I need to be up and ready to mm-hmm. get the snake in her room before she's awake. So oh when God. they got here and they bring the, I, I couldn't even really fathom how big the snake was going to be. When they brought it out, it was in like one of the big tubs with the lid on it. Huge. Like huge. And it took Ugh. two men to lift the tub out of the truck. Oh, okay. And I was like, oh my God, I was already shaking, waiting for them to open it and show me the snake. Because I started getting scared. They open it. This thing is gigantic. It's like oh this God. big around. Like, like, oh. like literally, the, the like this is the width. No, yeah. no. It's like tremors. No, no, thank you. <laughs> and the uh-huh. Honda is like. So, yeah. So I'm basically, um, you know, I was like, oh my God. All right, let's just get this in here. I was I, I was actually having second thoughts. I'm like, is this thing going to eat her? Like, I right. What if like this, this could go wrong? Yeah, this could go very, very bad. And mind you, my bed has been on the floor since I moved in my house because it's just like, I don't know. I never prioritized to get a bed sure. frame after it broke. We we're filming. My bed broke. And I was like, okay, whatever. It's on the floor. So just keep yeah. that in mind that my bed is on the floor when oh, she's bringing God. this snake in. Oh my Go ahead. God. So basically the guys have to bring the snake in, obviously, because I wasn't like, I, it took me a while to even handle the snake myself, but right. they bring the snake in and they, I are, I set up the camera first in her room and then I told them to like quietly bring the snake in. They bring the snake in and we shut the door and I hold it shut and the snake slithers and it's gets on leg. her leg. Oh my That's God. That's how she woke up. I woke oh up, my. I'm like, what is that? Like it was scaly. I'm like, what is that? And immediately I jump up. I know I don't know. I didn't even jump up immediately. I didn't know if I should stay still or right. you know. I was like, oh. and I was <laughs> I was sliding it off of my leg like slowly. As oh soon as I got it off God. of me, it, it I was literally in the corner like, Natalie. Oh. <laughs> He calls her mom and everything. And I I just wasn't saying anything outside of the door. Like she oh she my God. into the door because the snake was like blocking her entrance. And the snake starts going up the wall every like No. That's a nightmare because also you're waking up. So first of all, you don't realize like, is this a dream? Am I still sleeping right now? What is going on? Oh, that's insane. It was crazy. And the crazy part is, is like after I calmed down. Like the guy that brought it in, he was like, "No, she's really sweet." I'm like, "No, no, mm-hmm. get away from me!" And he's I don't like, care. No, trust me, it's sweet. And then I, it took me like what, a couple three hours, I think, like to pick <laughs> it up. I finally, like, literally after they were there, like talking to us, they put it back in the bed and they convinced me, like, just hold it. Yeah, and I was like, God. "Okay, fine." And then after I held it, I was terrified. But then oh I my started, God. "Okay, it's not, it is kind of sweet, but it was scary." But I, I held it. I did yeah. hold it. And it, yeah. I mean, and it didn't ruin your relationship. So no, that, no, I just had to do with something to go bigger, go home. Cause that's the mentality that we have. And I'm glad that we're friends like that. Cause I know some friends I can't do certain pranks on because the friendship's over. Right. Well, that's, <laughs> what, that's, that's my other question too, is that you guys, you know, you really push the boundaries of your boundaries with each other. And is there, I mean, there's obviously a level of respect that you have for each other. Yeah. Like, have you had ideas that you've had to say, actually, I can't, like, that'll be too much for them? We had, like, I think three. Remember, we three of them, like, we didn't just put out. It was just like, okay. We're kind of, yeah. It's just like, we've had somewhere, yeah, even once far. you shoot, yeah. like, sometimes we'll shoot something, and yeah. it's like, based on the reaction, that's kind of like, well, depends if we put it out, because if the reaction is sometimes like, it's not good. if we actually get upset, well, I'm, when I'm oh. saying the reaction, I'm saying like, sometimes right. if we have gotten upset, and it's like, all right, I'm not going to put this out because you got too ma- mad in the moment. <laughs> right, <laughs> yeah. You're like, I can't even edit around this to make right. it look okay right now. It's understandable, right. but it's like, let's just talk about it. Like, hey, it's a prank. And that's where our communication comes in, like, really good because it's just like, all right, even though we were upset, you know, and really, really mad, yeah, yeah. we're not, we're going to respect that boundaries of putting it out, you know, and then talk about it and stuff. Yeah. And I think because we are best friends, we've known each other for so long, we kind of have an understanding of what would be 
absolutely so, too far. You yeah. know what yeah. I mean? Yeah, no, that's uh, that's very healthy. I feel like that's a much safer space to create and to like test these content ideas in than just throwing shit at the wall and hoping right. that they don't get too mad. Um, okay, I I want to get into you know the evolution of of the relationship and everything, but we're going to take a quick break and when we get okay. back with more. Not too deep. I have um, I have so many questions about this love story. Okay, we'll be right back with more. Not too deep. <laughs> Today we have support, of course, from Squarespace. It's time to turn that dream of yours into a reality. They make it easier than ever to launch your passion project. If you're looking to start a new business, showcase your work, publish content, sell products, or more, Squarespace is the tool for you because they have beautiful templates created by world-class designers and the ability to customize just about anything with a few clicks. You can make a beautiful website all by yourself. They have a powerful e-commerce functionality that lets you sell anything online and analytics that help you grow your site in real time. And everything is optimized for mobile right out of the box. There's nothing to patch or upgrade ever. Buying domains is super simple and you can get any help that you might need with their 24-7 award-winning customer support. They empower millions of people, designers, lawyers, artists, gamers, even restaurants and gyms to turn great ideas into something real. So head to squarespace.com slash grace for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, use the offer code grace to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or a domain. That's squarespace.com slash grace offer code grace. Not, not too deep. Right now is a time that all of us are struggling with some sort of stress or anxiety or isolation or depression and you're not alone we're all going through it and if you're curious in something that can help you out better help better help offers online licensed professional counselors who can help their counselors specialize in issues like depression stress anxiety relationships sleeping trauma anger family conflicts, LGBTQ plus matters, grief, self-esteem, and more. You can connect with your counselor in a safe and private online environment. Anything you share is confidential. You fill out a questionnaire to help assess your needs, and you get matched with a counselor in less than 24 hours. And from there, you can easily schedule secure video or phone sessions with your therapist, plus exchange unlimited messages. I've had friends that use this app and love it so much especially because you have the ability to text with your counselor uh, everything's super confidential and super convenient to you wherever you are however you want to communicate and if for any reason you're unhappy with your counselor you can request a new one at any time for no additional charge it's an affordable option and you guys will get 10% off your first month of this already affordable option with the discount code grace that's better help B-E-T-T-E-R-H-E-L-P dot com slash grace. Discount code grace. Talk to a therapist online and get help. Okay, so you guys started your joint channel, you said, like at the end of last year. Mm -hmm. And it's really, uh, it's so fun because it, it, how do you describe the channel? It's like a mix of comedy and reality. Yeah. That's exactly what it is. Like, yeah, wow, that was a really good way of summing <laughs> it up. <laughs> Definitely. Well, it's com good. You, Because you guys, you vlog a lot together and you mm -hmm. do pranks and you have all kinds of fun ideas. I have a hard time, and maybe your audience does too, knowing what's real and what's maybe not. Yeah. yeah. But it's I think that's the, I think that's the, the good thing. You know what right. I'm saying? Like, there, you shouldn't be you know, sometimes we do have to tell them like, guys, no, this is real. Because of course, like people have their, yeah. um, their speculations. speculations, like, oh, is this real or is this not real and stuff? But I feel like as long as you're being like genuine and stuff, mm -hmm. like people can yeah. really feel when it's real and they can really tell when we go from, all right, we're entertaining you mode to, okay, oh, this, this is really, about our relationship. This is and about, right, us you yeah. and our feelings and stuff. And we just kind of recently transitioned more into so like, like, you know what? what? We want to be more raw with our audience mm -hmm. and yeah. not just be entertaining all the time yeah. because we are human like everybody else, you exactly. know? Totally. And that's been the really cool thing because I, I mean, you guys are, what's the status right now? 
We're like, give it second. <laughs> you know, I told her how I feel, but she told me, let's take it slow. You know, and okay. I, I respect that. You know, this, she's, she's, and this she's is been all, in this- and this was all real, right? Because you did, yeah. this, you did this three part series in which you basically told her how you feel about her in a yes. very honest and real way, <sighs> which I mean, it's, I sat there watching going, I can't believe this is happening. I can't believe this is happening. It's still happening. Oh my God, what's going on? And it's, yeah. I mean, that takes some balls to like, yeah. one, want to do that regardless of cameras, two, yeah. put it on camera. So like, mm-hmm. take me through that thought process. That That was the most vulnerable I think I've ever been in my life online. Ever. Wow. You know, and that, to me was just like, okay, the people have already been wondering. I'm gay. She's straight. You see the chemistry. You know what I'm saying? So many people were picking up on this, the feeling that I already have without, like, I was like not trying to express it. You know what I'm saying? It's like, this is my best friend. Like, why do we have to be a thing? You know, I just love her and she loves me as friends, you know? Mm -hmm. But at a certain point, it was just like, I fell in love with her, you know, and it was, I was trying not to. <laughs> oh, that's so sweet. I did. And it was just like, yo, people are noticing and I can't even hide it anymore. I can't even like when I'm looking at her, it's not like, oh, my God, this friend. It's just like, yeah, <laughs> that- like you're, just seeing, like, you're just seeing it through my eyes. Uh-huh. People- People like our fan pages will make clips and stuff like that of just where they caught those moments. And it's just like, God, it was insane how many people were like making these romantic yeah. videos about uh-huh. us. Like, how are they even putting this together? And it really did look like we were together yeah. in the videos. It was like, what? Yeah. And I, and, and I was like, you know what? I need to be honest with myself. If I keep trying to deny it or if I keep trying to hold back, then mm. I feel like it's also going to show because that started to show like the frustration of mm. me picturing her with somebody else was showing in some videos. In some mm. videos, people will be like, yo, are you okay, Easy? People are like, what's wrong with Easy? Like, you know, what's uh. going on? And they're not knowing what's going on internally, but they're mm-hmm. reading like it. The, you want to tell her what video? <laughs> like specifically, we had a video before I did my confession video. It was like two videos before we mm-hmm. played Smash or Pass. Uh-huh. You know that game that everyone yep. plays. We yep, played Smash yep. or Pass. And in that video, it was like, we started off like cool. Like, oh girl, you would smash him or whatever. But then it was just like, once she said, like, somebody that was actually really attractive and it could possibly be, I see him sliding her DMs and she would be like, you know, give him a chance. I start putting all that in my head. Uh-oh. And I'm like, <laughs> you would smash him? Like, why? It like, got so serious. I know. I was like, this game is getting weird. And people picked up on it. People like, mm-hmm. yeah. And I was just like, I was tired of feeling like, what if? What if I don't make the move and she's just, you know goes for another guy like I gotta do it I have to and I wanted to bring everybody with me and if I'm not gonna lie if I would have got my heart broken I think I I don't know if I would have put the video out (laughs) right I mean that's that's the thing is that it you posted all of it so yeah you you assume there's gonna be like a happy ending or and it's, it's a very brave thing to put online regardless of what the answer is um yeah so did you guys, after you filmed some of it, because it is in parts, did you kind of have a discussion off camera about like, are we really doing this? Are we really putting this out there? No, it was no, more so about her. Basically yeah. how it happened was... And explain the days a lot. Too, I was, that's what I was about to say. What a lot of people were confused about and the reason why they probably thought like, was okay, great. is this fake or planned because of it was being in multiple parts? Right. Um, it, if you notice, we had to explain or she had to explain mm-hmm. that she's like a lot of it was the same day. Mm-hmm. She just decided to break it up into separate videos. Mm-hmm. Gotcha. So um, like her, from her realizing and confessing to the audience that she was in love with me to coming to tell me she was in love that with was me. That was day. all the same day. Oh, wow. Yeah. But we, but the way she wanted to do it was put it into two separate videos. And then I, she really did tell me like I could take my time to you know decide and stuff and I don't have to like you know say anything right now so then I really did take my time and it was like rough I, I had to like ask my family advice like I knew that I felt something but I couldn't identify was that like intimate like romantic love or is that like I love her because she's my best friend yeah. you know what I mean yeah, yeah. So, so off camera I was just pretty much telling her like look 
Because even while we were filming, and I left that in there, she asked, she's like, well, why are you filming this before I asked her the question? And yeah. I was like, and I told her, like, you know, I just wanted to be completely honest and be completely honest with them. And after we filmed, I told her, I said, you know, we don't have to put this out or whatever, but I just want to be, let's start being transparent fully, you mm-hmm. know? And she she agreed. She was like, okay, let's do it. And then that's why I gave her her time or whatever. Just really think, you know, and all that other stuff. Like, it it, it was nerve-wracking, then, but I still yeah, respect it. Right. Everything. And then yeah. because she was being, you know, transparent on, uh, she wanted to be transparent. It really just gave me like, you know, thoughts that like, you know what? I do think this is the right way of doing it. So then I have my own uh, beauty channel and I was like, you know, mm-hmm. I'm going to, I need advice from even my fans because I don't know what to do. So right. then I need to be on there telling them like my reservations and I don't really know what I want to do yet. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So your, I mean, your audience is really like strapped in for the ride with you guys. Yeah. Like, that's pretty bonkers, but it's also cool. v- very beautiful. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, they they, I mean, they hope they pay yeah. attention. Like they give us a lot of advice. Yeah, like, what's the what's the audience like interaction like? What's the feedback that you've gotten from posting those videos? Oh my god, the most, most su- amazing support. amount of support ever. Oh, like that's sweet. And yeah. we've made like out of thousands and thousands of comments, you know, maybe it would be like one or two people saying something stupid, like yeah. whether it's like, yeah. I don't know, just dumb stuff, you or know, like easy been plotting on her. Like you could tell like yeah. this is fake or he's just like, other than that. right. Stuff like that, you know, but it's most of it has been just so supportive. Of, and we we've even gotten so many emails and DMs talking about how we helped people to stand in their truth or confess yeah. their love for somebody or whatever. That's and I'm amazing. like, what? Yeah. It's yeah. so cool. Yeah. That's it's, it's, it's it, incredible. That's really cool. And I like that you're so honest about like taking your time and like thinking through everything and being really respectful of each other and not having to like force straight to like now we're in a relationship and blah 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 here we go oh yeah we're doing all the relationship tag things it's just Um, like it's just like if you're dating somebody it's just like oh you go on a date and it goes great are you girlfriend and boyfriend no you gotta you know fill it out in that aspect you know what i'm saying so just taking our time Yeah. And I mean, and what a time to do it. too. (laughs) I mean, the world is a very crazy place. So we're all rooting for love in any capacity right now. I think that had a lot to do with it, too. (laughs) Us being together, like this quarantine, I'm like, (laughs) yeah, I mean, that could go a totally different way. You guys could get on each other's nerves and it went the opposite direction. So that's very cool. Um, so you guys have been busy developing, you know, a relationship. You've also released an ebook uh, yes. during quarantine. Why not? Tell me about this well, it, it, for people that don't know. Yes. So it's, it's called, called oh, go ahead, go ahead. Uh, <laughs> it's called um, Mastering the Art of Social Media. And basically, it's funny because a lot of people thought because we dropped a yeah. book around the, we dropped a book like maybe a week before yeah, you we, start, you like confess your feelings mm-hmm. for me, but people thought they had to do with each other. And it's like, oh. it doesn't, I know how it looks, but it has nothing to do with each At other. All. Right. I mean, um, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. but basically within the book, we um, are telling our audience, you know, and people who want to market themselves on social media, whether it's other people who want to be influencers or businesses mm-hmm. or whatever the case may be, the steps that we took to get mm-hmm. to where we are and we cover Facebook, um, Instagram, Twitter. and no, uh, YouTube. 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 Yeah. We talk a little bit about Twitter and like um, TikTok. TikTok as well, but it's mainly on those uh, those major platforms and basically how to monetize it, like how to create a buzz, like all of that. Yeah. That's awesome. Definitely. What's the, what do you think is the main um, key from the book or the main like piece of advice that you guys would give the main piece of the advice without giving too much yeah we can't give them uh, yeah <laughs> give them a <laughs> give them a little teaser that makes them want to read the book a right. teaser is you know hey, i have one but I don't, <laughs> it's like damn this is an actual quote so i don't want to say that but <laughs> with our book it was just like what i was telling you early earlier mm-hmm. it was like i found my passion and I stuck with that. You know, I, I knew what my audience wanted to see. So do something that, that you love, you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? But also figure out your audience. Like she was saying, to where it's not all over the place. You know, yeah. if you're talented at, you know, making funny matter, videos, yeah. you're talented at playing the piano, you know, 
stick to it. People are going to love it. Find, make it a way to where it's entertaining enough so people actually stay with you and watch you. You know what I'm saying? But stick with that and then capitalize off of your audience, you know, mm. engage with them and stuff like that. So you can you can really build off of that, mm-hmm. you know. Right. So exactly. And we also, you know, the thing that when people because we've been asked that before, like, OK, what's something that would make people want to buy the book? We also right. have um, worksheets at the back nice. of the book. Um, that it's not that we just throw all this information at them and then they're like, well, what do I do with this? Because a lot of people might not know. Mm -hmm. We actually have multiple worksheets helping them, like teaching them how to just, um, identify their brand, uh, breaking down, like how to create a brand in your vision. Um, we also have quotes from some like King Badge and Daystorm, like everyone, we have some right quotes of advice and stuff. Mm -hmm. And we put content calendars, like we put so much work into this book. Yeah. And, and on top of it, we wanted to create a book to where it wasn't like, let's just make money off this quarantine and release a book and give them like the general be consistent. It was like, no, Let's break down how I became successful, how you became successful, and put it in a way that it can it can help the audience understand. It's super understandable really from a, a you know a ten year old through an eighty year old can read this book, and it's like everybody still right. gets it. It's not too much information to where you feel like you read a history book, but it's right. not a little. It's not just a little bit of information. It's like dang, they didn't give us enough, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah. So we no, put that's... our all into that. I think that's great because, you know, working online is such a weird, like amorphous kind of thing that no one knows exactly what the guidelines or what the, like the blueprint looks like. And so to be able yeah. to like put it in a tangible form that's like, here, mm-hmm. this worked for us, take or leave whatever works for you and then go from yeah. there. I also think it's so true about finding something that works for you because your joy and your passion for it comes through and watching people like work joyously is one of the most, uh, it's so fun to do. Mm -hmm. And I think, I think you guys do a really great job balancing because like you said, you talk about LGBT stuff, but Mm -hmm. you, you don't get so heavy handed in it. Like you find the funny moments and you keep it light sometimes and you go deep and it's like a nice balance. I think it's something for everyone. Um, what do you think, what's the biggest misconception that people have for you guys in the work that you do online? Mm. Ooh, a misconception. Misconception. <gasps> what would you say? What do you think the biggest? What do you hmm. think? Well, <laughs> I, I know. know it's hard. I know. In general, there's like you know between traditional entertainment and like social media, digital stuff. There's always a little bit of like you know, new media, internet stuff isn't as uh, legit as, you know, acting, yeah, TV, films. There's a lot of that, actually. A lot of that hate about it, yeah. It, it's like, just to say, like, I guess to answer like that, like, people think, I feel like, but that was also the mindset, I would say, like, two years ago, then again, mm-hmm. because even now, traditional entertainment, traditional actors are trying to come over to this internet. Like, what is up mm-hmm. with this YouTube stuff? You see all kind right. of actors on YouTube. You see Will Smith. Yeah. You know, he's yeah. like, I, wait, you know, Will Smith is huge. And he yeah. even transitioned, like, I want to make a YouTube. I want to start doing funny videos, you mm-hmm. know? So yeah. it's like, we are obviously doing something right. And it's like, yeah. for the big actors, for the TV stars to want to know what's up with our world and come over here, it's like, we're we're the new television you know? Right. Yeah. And I still do think, though, even though there has been a lot of progress in, in the mentality of, you know, the industry mm-hmm. and stuff and looking at digital media, I think that there are still people who probably the masses that don't understand, like, how this is structured like a real job. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. like, not everyone's, of course, is structured like a real job, but anyone that you see that is extremely successful, it's not by accident. <laughs> I think that they think that, you know, success just comes overnight to people and stuff. And you, right. I don't think you really understand that saying mm-hmm. until you have to try and go get success on your exactly. own. And right. that's what we actually do talk about that a lot in the book, too, about how it's it's very structured it's not just oh it looks just fun and like oh my god you get to go post videos no it's not just that it's very demanding Mm -hmm. and you have to be your own boss in order to be successful yeah and even just for an example like like the whole love story that was a hundred percent real but I still had a business mindset it's like oh I could put all this in one video but you know what let me keep them here you know what Mm -hmm. I'm saying give them something to look forward to. You know what I'm saying? When you're watching a show, it's not, they're not going to give you the whole show in one 
quick. Right. You know, you gotta, you still have to have that business mindset to where it's like, all right, like we gotta be smart about it because, like you were saying too, there you could just have a viral moment and you don't know how to turn that into being successful, right? You know, but you have to strategize. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, totally. Now, uh, what are your biggest pet peeves about each other? <laughs> because. Being so close, there's got to be something that irks you about the other one. Hey, what's your biggest pet peeve? Ah, what <laughs> My biggest pet peeve is honestly, you wouldn't even expect that nobody would think like, what? Oh my God. Uh, no, I'll tell you. <laughs> my biggest pet peeve <laughs> with Natalie is that, and you know, I don't know why I don't like this, but Natalie literally being at my house all the time, even me being at her house all the time. When she's doing anything in the kitchen, when she's doing anything like in the bathroom, she doesn't close the cabinets. I don't get it. Uh. I just, <laughs> you wouldn't expect that to be it. But she doesn't close cabinets. She'll cook. I have one, two, three, four, five, eight. Now I have nine cabinets and she uh-huh. opens one, gets seasoned, and that one's open. I don't know why. I'm just like, yo, close the cabinets. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to trip over this. <laughs> it's weird, but. I get that yeah. though. Yeah, I get it. <laughs> What's yours um, for me? Shoot, I don't know. What Come on, I, I ain't perfect. I, I, ain't perfect. <laughs> I know, but I'm trying to think. Like I'm always trying to be happy, you know, and I feel like that annoys her sometimes <laughs> when it's like, even when she's like, you know, I can be annoying. I feel like, is that a pet peeve or not? Well, you can't pick my pet peeve. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My, her pet peeve is like super positive. I'm just always happy. Yeah. <laughs> I know I annoy her sometimes. Yeah, I mean, sometimes she's stuff. like overly goofy, and I'm just like, oh my god, leave me alone. But um, <laughs> what would my pet peeve be? Dang, I really don't know. Oh, sometimes I would say it does bother me that she can be like we're both clean, but sometimes mm-hmm. she oh. can be just. Like to me, I call it like nitpicky. I'm like, okay, chill out. Like, I just put here for a second. Like, okay, my sandals aren't in the corner. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh, but th- those are still very sweet pet peeves. How do you now, in a creative sense, when you guys are coming up with video ideas and coming up with like collaborative ideas, um, how does that work for you? Do you just kind of like sit down, present an idea, talk it out? Do you just mm-hmm. put a camera on and figure it out later? I think when more so when it's like a challenge, mm-hmm. it's like, okay, how can we do this challenge? You know, how can we make it entertaining? And it's just like, and keep the audience engaged. So mm-hmm. we sit down and think about it. Like, I'm just thinking about one of my favorite ones that we did was just like giving back. We we went to a Hollywood and she had a money suit on and it was just like, we want to give back, but it has to be entertaining. People give yeah. back all the time, but we want people to stick around, you know? So she was in a whole money suit. We put, I put tape money or glued money everywhere everywhere on her and we went down to Hollywood and it was like yo let's just ask people like trick questions and if they like get it right trivia, yeah trivia like, they get it right like let's just give them money yeah, yeah. you let know them take money off so we have like what dollar bills five dollars twenty yeah. dollar bills so depending yeah. on like how what my, how how much you want to go for is how hard the question is yeah you know? but we do we do when it comes to those kind of videos like the challenges or you know a vulnerable um, moments those just happen but as far as like the challenges we definitely plan them out and stuff like that but if it's a prank towards each other I definitely have to do my own planning there you go. <laughs> so that it's, part, yeah, it's tricky because different. we're always together too right so it's like how are we supposed to do this we're in the same house you know what I'm saying it's like all right let me call my mom call, call Natalie right now and then <laughs> you know try to do all of this you know so but it, it's it's really fun and it's really cool and I I love it and but that is like the planning process when it comes to like challenges and giving back and you know the raw emotions that just happens you know that's well there's something for everyone with you mm-hmm. guys um, okay we're gonna take one last break when we get back I have a couple more questions for you so we'll be right back with oh, more yeah. not too deep. Did you know that there's a company that's mastered the science of sparkle? Meet Lightbox Lab-Grown Diamonds. They hacked a billion-year process to grow stunning lab-grown diamond stones in about two weeks, and they're some of the highest quality stones that exist. They're always near colorless, always VS clarity, always a very good cut, and always $800 per carat. They come in three colors, too, white, blush pink, and soft blue. After they're grown in the lab, they're transformed into 
into gorgeous lab-grown diamond jewelry. It's beauty meets brain. Go to lightboxjewelry.com slash grace and use code grace for $25 off. That's lightboxjewelry.com slash grace. Use code grace for $25 off. No, no, not too deep. Do you have a bunch of stuff laying around the house that you don't use? You probably definitely do. And we've all had the time to just stare at it and wonder how and why it got into our locations to begin with. I'm talking about like kids' old baseball gloves or those jeans that you wore once or never wore and you had high hopes for, but now they're in the back of the closet. Or like a phone that's in a drawer somewhere. We all have a phone drawer. Well, there's an app that you can use to sell all of this stuff. It's called Mercari. Mercari is the selling app that makes it fast and easy to sell almost anything. It's super Super simple. You just take a couple pictures of your stuff, you add a description, and bam, your item is listed. And once it's sold, Mercari emails you a shipping label and you just stick it on and send it off. There's no meetups, there's no hassles. And with millions of people using the Mercari app in all 50 states, your stuff will really sell. And the app has over 600,000 reviews on the App Store with an average 4.8 star rating. So why not give it a try? Super easy, no meetups, no hassles, and you can get rid of all that stuff that makes you go, why, every time you look around? Don't let that stuff you don't use go to waste. Sell or buy almost anything on Mercari. You can find Mercari on the app stores or on Mercari.com. That's M-E-R-C-A-R-I, Mercari, the selling app. Okay. Now I'm going to ask you, ladies, the two questions I ask every single guest that is on the podcast. And the first is, who, alive or dead, would you most want to throw cold spaghetti at? (laughs) Yeah. Mm -hmm. Where do you come up with these questions? (laughs) It's a very important question. It's very, you know, it's, it's, it reflects a lot of the societal issues. It's, uh, it's near and dear to my heart. And this is an answer that can obviously change on a daily basis, but who in this moment today, alive or dead, would you most want to throw cold spaghetti at? Cold spaghetti. Okay. Okay. Go. Wait, I don't want to say dead. I wouldn't do dead. I wouldn't do dead. Don't have to. Okay. Okay. All right. So alive. I would just, damn, <laughs> Donald Trump. Yeah, yeah, that's a good answer. Dang, you took my. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, it's a very popular answer, and it makes a lot of sense. Um, yeah, well, I guess I wouldn't. Cold, I... it's cold too. Dang, does it have to be a person? <laughs> no, it can be. It can be. Uh, it can be whatever you want. Okay, because I would throw like multiple bowls of spaghetti at this coronavirus. <laughs> there you go. That's that a great a answer. One. That's fantastic. That a- we haven't had that answer yet, so that's perfect. Yo, I'm jealous. I'm so jealous <laughs> of that answer. <laughs> Your answer was basic. Everyone says that. I just- <laughs> Okay, the other question I ask every single guest is to tell us your worst pants shitting story or like a close call bathroom scenario, but you can only use three words or three small phrases. So, for example, mine is college jogging front lawn. Oh, dang. Damn. Yeah. yeah. And this is like, you said a bathroom experience, right? Like a bathroom emergency, something like that that stands out. Okay. You said three words, right? Three words are like small phrases, whatever works for you. Okay. Okay, peed. Uh-huh. Is that, okay, peed in the bed. Wait, it's words. Oh. It's three words. No, that's you can use small phrases. Like, you can use small the, phrases. Oh, small phrases. Okay. Yeah. That's, that's right, right? I'm yeah, right. yeah, yeah. You can do that. But it's but damn, it's four. Okay, peed in bed, Natalie. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. No follow-up <laughs> questions. <laughs> crazy oh my god yeah i, I love it that. anyway um, <laughs> okay mine would be all right um big big your life is Ele- elementary okay diarrhea school bus oh no <laughs> no come <laughs> Okay, before we get to the very end of the podcast, because we're reaching the end and we want to give you a gift for being here, uh, I have to know, 
I have to know what's what's next for you guys. You're doing videos. You have your channel now. Your book is out and currently still available for people to purchase, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so what else is going on? What's in the works that you can either tease at or mention? Oh, right. So basically, you know, we want to work on more um, like media, yeah. like the book and stuff like that. You may, we're thinking about doing something exciting um, for our audience. I don't want to say too much, but something exciting for our audience. Um, we were thinking about even like a book tour or something like yeah. that. Cool. Like, yeah, because the cells are doing so good that once the coronavirus is over, maybe we could do like some type of tour like that. Yeah. Um, and That'd we also fun. are working on um, producing like more shows because we have a show called The Scholarship um, right. that's on the Boost Network. And we want to create a movie out of the scholarship yeah. um so cool. we just yeah a lot yeah that's what i was gonna say just turning our turning our ideas that we've had for a while now and putting them on the big screen or uh, uh shopping them to like uh Networks. or pitching them pitching them to like Net netflix hulu everywhere you know what i'm saying and actually cool. this quarantine has been you know we had a lot of time as well so it's just like definitely how can we get this stuff out there after the COVID-19 and stuff to these mm -hmm. big networks, you know? Cool. Well, that's so exciting. I'm, I'm rooting for you. I'm very excited to see what happens next. <laughs> Thank um, you. Now, before we wrap up completely, usually when we do the podcast in person, we have a personalized fortune cookie that we give to our guests, but we have now a virtual fortune cookie that I believe Melissa is emailing to you guys if you're Ooh. able to receive it. Okay, so my fortune is, if you whisper into this fortune cookie, your surprise for Easy's birthday, we promise there's a chance somebody might not hear, so tell us. But I my birthday already came, surprise. but it came uh, out, then this so... Is, this is old then, then this is for next year, if you have yeah, already planning. <laughs> I feel like you guys are so far in advance on your plans for things that you must already yeah. have next year's plans. Exactly. That's, <laughs> oh my goodness, that's so funny. Okay. So wait, is she supposed to, uh, only in the fortune cookie, or tell, tell Oh you no, it, it's, it's a just joke. a joke. Oh, please. But <laughs> So uh, this is what I'm doing. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. Okay, let me read mine. Let me read mine. Okay, mine is... Here we go. A message from old easy to young easy. Please fix climate. Is it climate? What's the first thing? Climate or climate? You're saying that weird. Climate. Climate change. Yeah, I know. I shouldn't say climate. 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 No one says climate. I like this debate. <laughs> Girl, I'm about to read this for you. you <laughs> Go ahead. I swear. I got it. <laughs> All right, climate. You yes, like that? climate. Okay. Climate change. Okay, fine. A message from old easy to young easy. Please fix climate change. This is high key stressful. You have a lot of work to do fixing climate change for all of us. <laughs> uh, before we sign off, uh, where can everyone find you guys and everything that you're up to if they don't already know? Okay, so if you guys don't know, make sure you guys go to our YouTube, Easy X Natalie, and subscribe there. That's where all of our joint, you know, collaborations are and, you know, where we talk about our book and do pranks, challenges, everything. Go to Easy X Natalie. That's our Instagram together as well. And my Instagram is Young Easy, Y-O-U-N-G, Easy. E -E. And, then, and then mine is and Natalie period Odell. And then we both have our individual YouTubes. Mine is Natalie Odell and hers is Young Easy. Yep. And then, yeah, all of our social medias are the same. Twitter, all Twitter, that. Twitter, all that. <laughs> Amazing. Buy book. Yeah, buy the book, Master in the Art of Social Media, invest in yourself, you know. We're trying to build an a army, an empire of entrepreneurs. Yes. Okay? Yes. <laughs> uh, thank you, ladies, so much. This was so fun. Uh, please, guys, go check out everything that they're up to. You can watch their love story, their friendship story, read the book, get ready to see them on TV and in movies. It's so exciting. I can't wait to see what you guys get into this year. Uh, thanks again for being here, and we'll see you guys sure. next time on another episode of Not Too Deep. Goodbye. Too deep, too deep, too deep, not too deep with Grace Helbig. Not Too Deep is a production of Grace Helbig Incorporated, producer Melissa D. Montz, edited by Shireen Lani Yunus, post-production sound by Chris Henry, and an extra special thanks to Flula for the theme music. 